Hey guys, it's me, Waldo2413, back with another video. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between uh, transfers, um, the process of how they're made, how they're applied, how they're used. Um, we're going to cover your normal transfer that you might get, um, like FM Expressions, a place like that, 15%, uh, 15 cent transfer, something like that. These are ones I actually made myself. In an older video, you can look it up, see how to do them. We're going to cover direct to film transfers. Um, this is a new hot thing that's online, everyone's asking about. And we're going to cover the process of how Supercolor is done. And that's another transfer, but it's actually a direct to film transfer that um, not everyone wants to say that, but it, that is what it is. Some will call it a hybrid blend. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to explain them all real quick. Okay, so a normal transfer. Um, you're going to have transfer paper. You're either going to have hot peel or cold peel. You can get both. Um, what you're going to do, you print your screen, you print everything, the negative, and then you pretty much print onto the paper, the transfer paper. You can. Some people even use wax paper to print these things on. You print them on, you run the curing powder over them. Um, and then you run it through the dryer and let it pretty much gel up. In one of the other videos, I've actually peeled these letters off, and it comes off pretty much in a, almost like a vinyl sticker in a way, or a vinyl uh, HTV almost. Um, not HTV, but it is. This is a Plastisol one. You can get Plastisol water-based water transfer. There's a few different ones. That is how this method is done. We've printed on before. You've seen it done. Um, worked really good. Um, life expectancy and all that not as great as screen printing but they're super cheap super simple especially one colors you get a really good deal if you're buying them at places or if you're making them if you're making them you're still going to have close to eight to ten cents in it but depending what size paper you buy the paper can be anywhere from five to ten cents a sheet of paper so um, some of these like fm expressions and all that stuff where they got the 15 cent transfer it's a really good price it's hard to beat it on some of their stuff okay the next one we're going to go over really quick is direct to film now with a direct to film print what they're doing they've got a carrier sheet here kind of semi translucent and what they do it is using the same technique as a direct to garment shirt printer so you got water-based ink and they're using the same water-based ink that's used in a direct to garment printer except you're not pre-treating and you don't have um, you do a few different steps, but I'll explain what it's done. So what it does is it prints the, it's usually that someone's got either, uh, eight nozzles or two heads. And so what it is, you're going to print the color and then right behind that, the white's coming down. The white goes down anywhere that you have white or that you're going to base the whole thing. So you're going to cover the whole thing. The only spots you wouldn't on some prints, um, some people don't do it over the black. Um, some people do, these ones are all done over the black. Then what happens, um, the ink would be wet, they run the powder over it, so it's the same thing as you're doing with the other transfer. You're putting the powder over it, and then you're running it through a heater to make it pretty much gel up and do the little, they've got a few different style powders and all that. You can get some for um, like the black powder that turns the black, the back of these black. Um, they're like a poly, block, a poly blocker. So, um, you have more elastic ones and all, but it's pretty much the same thing with a transfer. You, you can get the different glues, and that's what it is. The powder is the glue. So then it runs through the transfer machine, runs through the, the cure, and there's people that got like the, I think it's the L6000 or whatever. So they're doing that by hand, the same thing you would do with the transfer. You can, you can automate a, a normal transfer. You can do a manual. Some people will print manual and just print them and then run them through the other things. Some people, I have a single head auto unit, so literally I just put them right against the tape corners, step on the pedal and it prints it. These, you can use an automatic machine to do it, like you see online, or you can actually do the one at a time, run the powder and then put it like cured under a uh, flash unit. You can cure it under a heat press. There's a few different ways to cure them or you can let the automatic machine do it. That is how that's done. We're gonna print this one after. The difference too, they do make different carrier papers. Some is hot peel, some is cold peel. We'll explain that too in a few minutes and um, the results. And we did on the live video, we went over some of this and I did a live feed and we're gonna go over that again. The other method 
is the same method that a uh, super color uses. Now you can either use water-based inks or you can use kind of like, a, well you can use a laser or you can like a water-based ink or a something similar to a solvent ink like some of the Epson inks. Um, but here's what they do. They print on a carrier sheet and this carrier sheet holds the ink. The difference between this and a direct to film is what you do, this is not a white ink printer by no means. The other one is not a, it's white ink, but it's not a white ink laser printer. Um, but what you do is you print onto the material, the ink is on there, and you can see it's translucent. You can see my hand through there. But what you do is once you print this, you make a screen uh, that is literally the whole image that you want, the white background. And then what you do, like on this print, we put registrations, and I'll explain that, but... So what you would do is you would take your screen and you would actually, it would cover this whole area up and you would print the whole area white, just like on here, except this was done with the machine doing it. You're going to do it manually or with a semi-auto or auto. It's going to print white ink. You can either have water-based ink or you can have plastisol ink. Um, a lot of the uh, super colors are water-based ink. It's a little bit thinner. It gives you a smoother thing, but you can print these with Plasticol ink too, they do work. Um, and then what you're doing with that, so like this is a 13 by 12 piece of paper. So this is a massive print. You can actually see it would cover a huge shirt or shirt. I wear a 2X and I think this one is a 3X. And it will cover that much area. So it's a massive large print that you can print, the print area. You could gang these sheets up and cut them. That's similar to what Supercolor is doing. The difference, um, and I'll explain, Supercolor, or Stan, at least in the last video, he said they use a water-based, it's a hybrid technology. So what they're doing, they're using a water base on this carrier, and then they are putting, putting water-based ink down, or plastisol ink, depending what process and all that. But most of their stuff is a water-based ink. This one right here, you can buy these sheets. Um, they're not sold in the States. Um, the company that makes it, they don't sell them. I bought these. Had them imported, I think, from England. Um, so, sorry, I can't give you the answer where to buy them from. Um, they don't, the price has gone up so much on these sheets, they're pretty expensive. But what they do, um, you can also laser print. So, this image was ran through a laser print. And so, with the laser print, like for instance, if you're using a normal printer like an Epson, uh, like 1400, 1430, it would take you a few minutes to print these things. With a laser printer, the laser printer that I have, I can print 80 sheets in one minute. So, um, it's quite a bit of sheets of paper, these that you could make. So you could, you could never surpass your quantity of printing, I guess you'd say, by using the, this process. The difference is, is once you're done, you've got to take this over and... You can either use a vacuum fixture, you can use a manual press. Um, it's the same as kind of how Supercolor is doing. But what, what I used to do with these is we'd take a registration and what we would do, we'd take our screen and we would burn the screen to solid white, but we'd burn the registration points on it. And so what we would do is we'd take white ink, black ink, whatever, put a piece of tape down on our palette, put the ink over it, or put screen the ink marks on there so we would have pretty much dots on the corner cure them put tape over them and what we would do is actually you take this you set it up you line your registration up with these dots in the corner i have a vacuum fixture table so literally it would vacuum it down the spots are held and then i step on the auto and it automatically does it or even on my manual i have a manual vacuum fixture so i would line the registration points up and that's going to line the screen up perfect every time you can also use edge registrations on them there's a lot of methods that you can do with this. Um, this is pretty much the same process Supercolor is doing. The difference, Supercolor is where Stan and everyone, oh, it's a hot peel. It works great. Um, that's why when you watch a lot of these videos that everyone has out there, they always have a lifting issue because it's a hot peel. And the glues and all that sometimes don't bite as good as it could if you let it cool and peel compared to like this paper um, was a cold peel paper. Um, I've done a video on it. The one that had the uh, Rockstar Energy Drink mask I did, that was done the same process as a cold peel. It peels off perfect. 
Um, they do make it in hot peel paper, and that's pretty much what Supercolor is doing. The difference is if you're working by yourself, for instance, you can press the shirt and set it aside and just keep pressing, and then when you're done, you go over and peel them. So it's not that a hot peel is quicker. You, you're still taking the same amount of time. You're just putting them over there and keep pressing until you're done. If you're only doing one shirt, yeah, a hot peel is going to be quicker. That's how many people print one shirt. The other thing, too, if you're doing these at home, you got to burn a screen to do this. So you've got to factor that cost into it. Um, compared to a direct to film printer, you can print one of these. That's all it costs is one. You don't have a screen set up, nothing. You got the width of your paper, but that's why these are somewhat better. The difference you can hear is the thickness. These carriers is a different material. The carrier is a gloss back and it's got the adhesive on the other side. These are kind of frosted on both sides. There's a material, you can feel it with your finger. Um, the difference, these don't hold up as well in the humidity. Um, you don't want to get these wet, you don't want to do a bunch of other stuff. This is more durable if you, that happens, you don't have to worry as much. Um, but that is how it's done. So for all these people saying super colors, this and that, it's done this way and done that way. A lot of them are, for one, they don't know or they're just making it up. But like I said, this is a true process of how both of them are done. I used to do these. We wouldn't sell them. We use them in our shop. Um, just because getting this paper, it's too hard for at least for me to get it shipped here. And the availability is just hit and miss. Um, so switch a few different processes. But I've tried them all. And I can tell you how it's done. The other thing, too, that's nice, like I said, I printed this with lasers. Now, people are going to say, well, what about with them registration points? Well, when I print the actual white ink, we tape off that after we do the markings on the palette. So when we tape them off, we're not putting the white ink down. So what's the nice thing about this, this ink will not transfer off this paper unless you have the adhesive on the back to let it stick to the shirt. So anything, let's say, like, I didn't want all this splatter over here on the shirt. Let's say I said, hey, I don't want that. Well, if I just printed the solid thing and I left the just a solid mark around it, that's not going to transfer. Or another thing, let's say I said, hey, I want to go put um, reflective vinyl in these eyes. Well, if I don't print the white over this whole background where these eyes are at, it's not going to even transfer these eyes. These eyes are going to stay on this paper. So then I can actually heat press reflective vinyl over the eyes or just red, like the chrome over it. There are things you could do to actually do that, but in the print, you would still have here, if you, you would only print where the white's at. That's only going to transfer. And then, of course, the same thing, though, you put the powder on these, run through the, the cure, the cure. it's going to cure the back just like the, any of the other ones. It's going to have the powder on it's cured, and you've got a shelf like you, you set them there. Um, most of these are 280 to 320 on the heat press, depending which ones, uh, variance between them all. But that is how they're done. Um, and like I said, they're... There's really not one better than the other. Um, in the live video, we did these, and some of these I got were hot peel, some were cold peel. The hot peel, it peeled, but it lifted a little bit, just like Supercolor does sometimes. Well, the event, the other thing, I pressed it again, and instead of hot peeling it, I let it, I let one I hot peeled, the other one I actually pressed it, let it cold peel, peeled it right off, peels off perfectly fine. Um, it's up to you on, depending on Supercolor, they might, with their paper, that might not be a cold peel. But a lot of these other ones, you can do both. Um, but that's some of the issues about it. If you watch any of these people that promote it, a lot of them are getting kicked back also from Supercolor. If they're like, hey, use my link. So-and-so uh, -so backslash Waldo. So Supercolor backslash. Or they're getting affiliate programs. So that means they're getting paid. That's why they're pushing a lot of these really hard. Um, try it for yourself. Um, like I said, if a lot of these people, yeah, they work great. And I watched another one. He's like, well, it's my fault it lifted. Well, the problem is if it's your fault it lifted, you're still taking time to print these every time. So if it took you two extra minutes, that cold peel actually probably was faster because you didn't have to keep pressing it and pulling it and lifting it. I will say this. Um, here is a shirt. And then depending if you repress them, this is these are all different uh, transfers and all that different brands. But for instance, this one, was peeled and it was never pressed again where a lot of people do that hey i want to press it one more time after i do the peel um to press it into the garment to get a better feel if you don't it has a more shinier feel and also the feel and look the other thing it's not coming up but it has a a more glossy look and it feels more rubbery on the surface that pink shirt that i did which i don't have it sitting here either was in that one video that i could stretch and same thing you can stretch these to death it's not going to go nowhere 
It's going to bounce right back. It's perfectly fine. If you press it after, though, it presses it in, and it's almost like a screen print. You can't really... I mean, if someone that's printed a lot might be able to tell. It's really good quality, hard to tell the difference. Um, but like I said, and this is the press and press and pulled. And this is the one that did lift and repressed it. worked perfectly fine. So that's how it's done. Um, thanks for watching this video, guys. The next video, we are going to do the press on this just so you can see one of them other ones pressed if you missed the live. So we're just going to do the one transfer because I'm not going to waste the big one. Um, it's not worth me going to go coat that one. This was just one I did. Just I had laying around. It was an extra from one of the artworks I did. But that's how they're all done. Hope it helps you guys. Hope it makes you understand the difference between it and what to look for. The big thing, too, if you're... If you're only getting, let's say you're doing a one color print on a shirt, you would be almost stupid to spend the money on a super color print that's one color because a super color this size, it's a size that they charge you not per color. So that's going to be probably a 5 to $10 transfer depending on the quantity you buy and all that. Where if you go to like FM Expressions, uh, the other one has got like three numbers. I can't think of all of them right now. But if you went to one of the 15 cents transfer companies, you got like a $20 setup fee, but it's 15 cents after that. So, like I said, factor that in, um, and it's pretty simple to do the math. You've got less than a dollar if you bought 100 of them per piece compared to the other transfer. And then, like I said, the size. So if you only need one color um, and you don't have a heat press, um, you don't want to do the vinyl, HTV. HTV can be really expensive over time, especially on big prints. The other thing too, doing all the weeding. So you have weeding here, weeding here, weeding here. This one's not too bad, but other images, like all these dots, if you had to weed around that or pull them dots out, if it was a negative image, it'd be miserable. Um, HTV has a point when you're starting out. It's good names, numbers, and jerseys. It's pretty costly in the long run though. So that's where some of these other methods come into play. Like I said, one or two colors, transfers, this style is super good, super cheap. The best bet you got press, press them yourself. Because then even if you're screen printing, you got your screen fee, but you're paying a screen fee with this. You're not paying a screen fee with one of these, but you are paying a premium price for these and you're paying shipping. Um, your ink, you're going to have less than five cents of ink when you screen print yourself. So you, 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 it's like that's your cheapest method. You do have the screen though, so you're looking at five to ten dollars with chemicals. But putting it on the screen, taking it off, and you have the initial investment of the screen. But that's kind of a rundown. Um, which one to go, which one to choose. Like I said, small numbers. Um, maybe cut vinyl, depending on what you're selling them for. Um, if you want that more premium feel, go with the transfer. Transfers too, though. Like I would use a transfer any day over cut vinyl. I hate cutting vinyl. I hate weeding it. I hate the time and the cost of it. I'd go with something like this. Make it myself or sub them out. Um, most of the time we sub them out just because they're cheaper to get them for 15 cents than it is to actually mess with them yourself. Um, but you can do it or if you want like a special color like this blue wasn't a normal color and then to have them mix it was going to cost more. So I did it myself. But um, I'd go that route like I said. And then like I said I'm not saying don't use super color. Try it. Decide for yourself. Try some of the other ones out there. Like I said if you're having the press issue where you're not getting the right pressure, temp and all that. Um, a lot of these other ones I found I don't have that issue with. Um, Cost-wise, I can't tell you. These are samples that I've got from the machine vendor when I was looking at their machines. They'll sell you samples. They won't let you put pick the artwork, and you're, you're going to pay for shipping. So shipping from China and all that from a lot of these places, they're going to charge you $30 for a handful of these samples to even try. Supercolor will send you a free sample pack, if I'm not mistaken. But like I said, try them out, see for yourself, um, and check out, see what you like. Um, because like I said, they all got different advantages, different price ranges. Um, and like I said, more and more people are going this route. Some people are converting the machines. Um, the other thing too, if you're looking at buying a machine or getting into it, the big price difference too. Something like, like this method where uh, Stan brought up before, he said, well, most people that would use the other method, well, Here's the thing, on a direct-to-garment machine, um, an Epson machine with the sales price, you're looking at about $15,000. You also got to get a pre-treatment machine. Um, some of these machines, ten dollars to $15,000 also, but you don't have to get a pre-treatment machine. Um, so, And then people are converting these for as low as $1,000, $2,000. The speed is nowhere near um, production of 
You're not going to do a thousand shirts a day with the little, uh, that F600 or 600, 6000, whatever it is. You're limited how many you're going to knock out a day. But if you're only doing a few, that speed is actually of that machine is quicker than a Epson direct to garment machine. So you're only going to get maybe six to 10 on an Epson machine shirts per hour. Um, so that film, you're going to get the same. So if you, if you were looking at a direct to garment machine, this might be another option for you because these you can take and put up and keep them aside or make them for events and do one off so you're not wasting a shirt to do a sample on and find out that someone needed a, a 3X instead of an uh, extra large. So there are advantages to all of them. Um, direct to garment has a nice place also. Um, if you're doing events or shows, it's easier to take this in a heat press than it is to take a direct to garment machine. Um, so like I said, look at it, see what's out there, decide for yourself. I'm just giving you guys some choices, decisions, trying to help answer some questions that everyone has and asks. Um, if you have any more questions, post them in the comment below. If this video helped, give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And please, if you like these videos and you want to be notified when they're going to come on, hit the notification button. It should be, I think, over here. Um, and the little notification bell, so it will notify you every time I drop a video. Thanks again, guys. My name is Waldo2413. I'm out.